All right, let's get started. Hello, everybody. I'm Keith Jones. I'm the creator of the Six Figure Real Estate Wholesaling Coaching Program. I teach financial freedom and economic independence through wholesaling real estate. We buy and hold, we fix and flip, but we uh, take pride in, in being an aggressive and consistent wholesaling business. Wholesaling is the uh, most scalable way to become a real estate entrepreneur It's also one of the most economically feasible ways to become a real estate entrepreneur. I've been going over a lot of, I've been like looking a lot of about uh, Facebook uh, uh, inf um, pages and, 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 and Instagram pages and answering lots of questions lately. We, we're getting a lot of questions and I'm actually expecting a handful of those people to Maybe show up tonight and listen in and ask some questions. Uh, by the way, tonight's um, session or class, if you will, Zoom Live, is going to be on finding uh, how to build your buyers list. Um, and I actually got that idea from looking at the um, Instagram and Facebook my Facebook pages. And people are, uh, of course, obviously beginners uh, wanting to understand how to uh, attract cash buyers, how to build their buyers list, excuse me. And uh, so we're gonna go over some of that tonight and um, hopefully you all will uh, take some notes, write some things down and, and, and take advantage of uh, the information that I'm gonna be sharing with you tonight. Um, we do have, we, do, we did get a new Zoom uh, ID number. Hopefully everybody uh, that usually attends our knows that we have a new Zoom uh, ID meeting number. But in the meantime, you know, this is being recorded. And I think it goes on to uh, an archive, maybe Facebook, YouTube, that you can uh, view it later. But, in, but so let's get started. Now, one of, for those who are on um, budgets, uh, and in fact, let's go ahead. Building your buyers list is kind of, it's really the, 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 you can build your buyers list with, with, with zero dollars if you want to. Um, you really can build your buyers list with zero dollars, but we're going to start at the top and work our way down. And starting at the top is um, bandit signs. Bandit signs are, of course, bandit signs cost. They cost time and they cost money because you got to put the bandit signs out. And most of the time you're going to have to keep putting out bandit signs. But bandit signs will, bandit signs are more likely to bring you cash buyers than, it will, than it's going to bring you uh, um, uh, uh, sellers. Now, 
I would say you go probably for every one bandit sign you get out, you probably get five uh, cash buyers, and if you're lucky, uh, one seller. If you're lucky, sellers aren't really uh, nowadays sellers. I mean, and you see bandit signs everywhere. When I'm telling you, most of these guys are putting out bandit signs are building their buyers list more than they're doing anything else. Um, you know, cash buyers. So. Bandit signs are good for bringing you know, uh, for your buyers list. Now, the thing about bandit signs, we, we've gone over that before, talking about cash buy, um, um, uh, uh, um, um, attracting sellers. You have to be careful with your uh, with your. You have to be careful with your. Uh, you have to be careful with your um, um, bandit signs because with bandit signs they can be considered litter. So you wanna, you, you, when certain counties here in the metropolitan area of Atlanta, they do not allow bandits. Now they just don't play that. Um, College Park, they, they, they don't play that. Douglas County, they don't play that. Um, there's a handful more that just, well, I think like, I think East Point, well, they, no bandit signs. So you have to be careful with bandit signs and there are some some counties and cities or towns, if you want to call them, are very easy going about bandit signs. But just be careful and pay attention to where you put those bandit signs. But bandit signs will, bandit signs will um, help you to um, uh, build your, your cash buyers list. Tonight's lesson is on how to build your buyers list. We want to build our buyers uh, cash buyers list. And I'm um, talking about, I'm gonna work my way backwards because again, bandit signs do cost. You have to do them on a consistent basis. Also, when you're putting out bandit signs, you wanna put out your bandit signs in areas where people gotta slow down or stop, uh, which of course means uh, yield sign, uh, 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 at the corners of yield signs or stop signs or traffic lights. You wanna put your bandit sign. You, there's no need to have a bandit sign well, someone's going to pass by and passing by at 80 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour and can't read what's on the bandit sign. And so you want to be aware of how you place your bandit sign. Also, you want to put your information on the back and the front side of a bandit sign because there are some uh, people out there who aren't as ethical as you and I are, and they will literally take your bandit sign up, put their information on, on the blank side and use your bandit sign and, and maybe white out your information. I've had that happen to me uh, just once. And I actually, the, the, the guy wasn't even smart enough to put the bandit sign in a different area. He literally took my bandit sign up, uh, um, turned it around, wrote his information on it and, and, and put it in the back in the same spot. Uh, and, and, and he wasn't even smart enough to white my information out. I think he put an X through it or whatever. But of course, me passing by that area saw my bandit sign in the same area and, and, and knew it was my sign just because of the way it was the way I put it out there. And I'm just literally this guy just put it right back in the same spot. I called him up and we had some words. He apologized and never had that issue again. I had to help him understand again the ethics or the lack of ethics of what he was doing at the time. So but bandit signs will bring more buyers than they're going to bring sellers. So if you don't mind spending, you know, you, you can go. In fact, I think where this started with me, I, someone sent me a, a, a Facebook question where, uh, you know, on, on where to find cheap bandit signs. By the way, you can go to cheapbanditsigns.com. You can go to dirtcheapbanditsigns.com and order bandit signs. Now, some will come with the stand. Some you have to order the stand separately. And uh, back in the day, a lot of these guys would literally put their bandit signs, nail them to telephone poles. And um, in fact, the, most of the counties that are liberal, if you will, about bandit signs, they, as long as you don't uh, nail them to a tree, they don't really have much of a problem. If you nail them to a telephone pole, of course, the code enforcement is going to yank them down ev eventually. Uh, but again, that's only in those counties that are liberal and easy going regarding bandit signs. Now there are some counties that just don't play that. Uh, whether they're on the ground or a telephone pole or a tree or a fence, they, they consider it litter and never put your direct phone number 
on a sign of any kind, a, a banded sign, and even on your vehicle. I have uh, magnets on my vehicle, and the magnets on my vehicle say we buy houses. Actually, it says uh, cash for your crib. But I, my, on my signs, on my vehicle, I don't want people calling me directly while I'm out in the field. Uh, they, when they call that number, they're calling our answering service. And our answering service is taking the message and emailing it to uh, my office. And from there, I, I go through the emails to see if it's uh, something I want to deal with. So, you know, again, that's bandit signs. Now, um, the next, uh, here's a free way. Now, it may be a little sketchy right now because of this COVID-19 pandemic situation. One of the ways I used to train a lot of my students building their cash buyers list is going to the auctions. Go to the auctions. The first Tuesday of every month, they have auctions at the county courthouse steps. And that's a great way to build your cash buyers list. The county auctions at the courthouse steps. Those auctions are always going to be, um, um, there's always going to be cash buyers. That's what they did. They're literally there with, oh, I forgot to turn my phone off. So we, this is good. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not going to be able to take that call. I'm trying to turn it off. I won't answer it, but I'm going to turn off the, the volume here in a second. I apologize. I normally do that. It's one of my realtors calling, but she, she actually knows that I do a class this time every every night. I mean, every Wednesday. So as soon as it stops ringing, I'll turn the sound off. Here we go. All right. Excuse me. All right. Okay. The auctions. Those auctions are always going to be full of people who are, they literally are there with um, uh, um, cashier's checks. Of course, they're not walking around with suitcases or, or full of cash, but they're there with cashier's checks bidding on properties to uh, lock down and get into their inventory, whether they're fixing flippers or buying holders. Those people are there to spend cash buying properties. So the auctions are another uh, great way to find uh, people uh, to build your cash buyers list. The auction, I, I highly recommend you, depending on where you live, you know, what county you live in, but the first Tuesday of every month, the auctions usually start somewhere between 9 and 10 a.m. Depending on the size of the county, they can go as late as 3 to 4 in the evening. Um, you, you, of course, your larger counties like Fulton and DeKalb, uh, um, uh, going to, and Gwinnett, uh, probably those, those counties are going to, their auctions are going to last the longest. But let me give you some tips on dealing with people uh, and trying to get their uh, information as you know, to add them as a cash buyer to your to your list. First of all, never disturb them while they're bidding. Stand back, look at the crowd, watch the guys and, and the ladies and gentlemen who are bidding. You know, let them do their bid. Do never disturb them while they're bidding. They're bidding on a property. They don't want their trend of thought broken. Uh, they, you know, someone else may jump in and whatever. Do not disturb them. Let them get their bids in, and then you make your uh, business-like approach. First, you should always take something to write with and something to write on when you go to these auctions, and your business card. Now, you're going to give them your business card, introduce yourself. Uh, back in the day, of course, we're not shaking hands anymore, but you you know, offer a handshake. I mean, people aren't really doing that anymore because of this, this, this pandemic situation, but Give them a business, introduce yourself, give them a business card and let them know that you have, you have properties for sale in the area that, I mean, you make this list, let's just say you had the Fulton County uh, um, courthouse auction and um, you're going to tell them, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Keith Jones and uh, I, I pick up properties in the Fulton County area uh, on a consistent basis that uh, first of all, you don't have to be, there's no bidding. So this is not an auction. I'm selling these properties at about 40 to 50 cents on the dollar. And would you like to be added to my buyer's list? 99% of the time, they're going to say yes. they like to be added to your buyer's list. So when you add them to your buyer, this is what you do. At that time, you're probably going to just ask them for their name and their phone number. Get their first and last name and their phone number and write it down. Give them your business card. 
You're going to give them your business card, but don't expect them to call you because once they're finished bidding or they're in between bids, believe me, they've basically forgotten about you. They're on to the next property or if they just completed a successful bid and they got something that they want, they need to, they need to go take care of some paperwork, get the property paid for, you're the last thing on their mind. But you want their first and last name. If they have a business card, ask them. You know, If you have a business card, I'll take it. But if not, let me have your first and last name and your phone number. The reason you want that is because the next day you're going to call them and remind them of who you are. And of course, remind them that you're adding them to your cash buyers list. At that time, you want their email address. Don't fumble around with an email address out at the uh, auction. It's just some people's email addresses are complicated. You know, they got these lower scores and upper scores and dashes and sl you don't need that right now. You want their first and last name? I would, in fact, again, I would take, I would take my, my legal pad. I take my legal pad and I put the date at the top of, of my legal pad showing that this is the date that you're out at the courthouse is going to be the first Tuesday of whatever month. You're going to put that date in the month and the, in the county that you're at. And the reason you're going to do that, because if depending on where you are, if you have enough time, you're going to scoot on to another county and, and rinse and repeat. But in the meantime, while you're there talking to these, uh, uh, getting to know these uh, uh, um, cash buyers, this is what this is tonight's all about, how to build your cash buyers list. And so, you're going to get their first and last name, their phone number. You're going to call them the next day, remind them who you are, reintroduce yourself, let them know that you're going to be adding them to their buyers list and ask them for their email address at that time, writing it down accurately. <clears throat> so that's what you're going to do. At now, if depending on which counties you are, uh, that you start at, you could potentially go to another county and do the same thing. All, all of the counties have auctions. Uh, the first Tuesday of every month. So it's a great way to pick up, uh, build your buyers list is going to those auctions. So now we got, we started out with bandit signs and you got people calling you, you got your bandit signs out, they're going to the right areas. You got buyers calling you, adding to your buyers list and you're hitting the auctions. You're hitting the auctions, maybe two uh, or three, as many as you can, the first Tuesday of every month <clears throat> and you're building your list that way. The next way to, uh, to build your buyers list is um, so easy, literally. This is one way when I got, you know, the, <clears throat> the real estate market fell apart, of course, in 2008. And of course, we, I mean, just like almost, I mean, I, I, I knew multi-millionaire and real estate investors lost everything. I was trying to be a little, um, I was trying to be a little cautious at the time. We were we were building houses at the time, new construction. We started building houses in 2004. And my game plan at the time was to do new construction, uh, build about six houses a year, live off the income of the sale of two of the houses. We were netting about 50, 60 grand per house. And then the other four houses, I would put that money away. My goal was to buy self-storage facilities. By the way, it still is. Self-storage is where we're going next in commercial real estate. <clears throat> but in the meantime, by the time 2008 came around, everything fell apart. We lost everything. Wholesaling is what got me back into business. Six-figure income. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me hit a little water here. <clears throat> All right. Wholesaling real estate got me back into the business. Six-figure income. Uh, enjoying what I do. We loving my lifestyle. Uh, uh, controlled my destiny. And so, um, but one of the, the, the reason I'm going there is because at the time when we, when I got back into wholesaling, I knew one of the first, the, the power is in the list. It doesn't have to be a big list, but it gotta be, it should be a strong list. I started Googling. I literally just started Googling. We buy houses, Atlanta, Georgia. And then I, then I and, and when you Google that, the people who buy houses in Atlanta, Georgia, their names are there. Their names are going to come up. Their company names are going to come up. Their contact information is going to come up. That's why I said building your buyers list can be, because of the technology nowadays, it can be the easiest thing that you do in this business is, is building your buyers list. So you want to make sure that when you, when it's, as you build, your, um, you Google 
we buy houses in whatever city you do you're interested in. So I would do uh, I would do we buy houses Atlanta Georgia and I would go through and write down everybody's contact information if they had email addresses I'd write down whatever I come up with and, and I would make note of that we buy houses whatever city then just say I I, I did we buy houses in Atlanta then I'm gonna Google we buy houses Decatur Georgia. And the people who want, and a lot of them will be the same, and some of them won't, because there are people who will only want to buy in certain areas, and that's the beauty of being able. You can, you can build your buyers list just just by googling. We buy houses Atlanta. We buy houses Decatur. We buy houses Stone Mountain. We buy houses uh, um, uh, Fayetteville. If you Google the, the people, the the companies, the investors who buy houses in those areas. Are going to come up because the most of them, you know, have websites. This course say we buy houses, you know, so the information is going to come up. So another easy way to build your buyers list, <coughs> your cash buyers list. Now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we start out with bandit signs. Okay, so you're getting calls and you're building your list from bandit signs. You're going to the auctions the first Tuesday of every month. You're building your cash buyers list that way, and now you. Um, you're Googling, and you can do this. You could probably do it, you know, throughout the country. Easy way to build your buy. If you want to start building, if, whenever you're ready to go virtual, which is where I want to lead you all, take you all, when you want to go virtual with this, this is one of the ways we're going to start going virtual. When I'm ready to start uh, wholesaling houses in my hometown, Detroit, Michigan, you know what I'll do? I'll Google, we buy houses in Detroit, Michigan, and build my buyers list and start a marketing campaign. It can be that simple. You got to have some other things going on in the middle because you once you start a marketing campaign in that area, you want to understand, you want to get to know some other wholesalers and, and, and realtors to help you with some stuff. But I, I, I digress from that. I just want to take you back to how, what we're talking about here, which is building your cash buyers list. So uh, right now, I'm going to stop and ask, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Is everybody muted? No one's muted. Okay. All right. No questions. Ask to unmute. Let's see if everybody who who's muted or unmuted. Anybody have any questions? That being said, no sir. All right. I hear somebody. I'm gonna. Even Purdue coach Jeff Brock, who announced earlier this week that he was diagnosed with. I'm I'm hearing a. I'm hearing a, a, a television or something in the background trying to. If you have a television or radio on in the background, could you turn it off or down? Thank you. Anyway, so we are uh, again. Um, so now we're we, once you you again once you start understanding how easy how 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 much easy uh, the technology, the current technology has made this business. I mean, it's, it's, again, if you really want to do something in this business, you can do it. So you can Google, we buy houses, Atlanta, Georgia, we buy houses, Macon, Georgia, we buy houses, Columbus, Georgia, and start building that cash buyers list. Now, another way uh, to build your cash buyers list is joining some of your local real estate investor association clubs. <laughs> not, a, not a lot of that's going on right now because of the pandemic. There used to be a club, uh, a uh, investor association meeting that I would attend. This every it was every Thursday on uh, Roswell Road, um, uh, kind of in between Buckhead and Atlanta. But every Thursday, I would not be so at Sandy Springs, yeah, Sandy Springs, Palm Springs, one of them, something like that, on Roswell Road. But every Thursday, they have a meeting. It was called the Haves and the Wants. And that meeting took place uh, at like from 1.30 to 2.30 every Thursday. One of the reasons I chose that meeting is because it was in the daytime. A lot of these other meetings back in the day, and I'm kind of glad it's not most of that's not going on, because most of their meetings were in the evening, which I kind of understood because for people who work regular jobs and was trying to learn the business, you know, they got to be at a job and then they're, you know, five, six in the evening, you know, everybody's heading to a meeting that's, you know, uh, 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 at the back of a restaurant or something like that and starts at seven o'clock. And it's supposed to go from like seven to eight, eight thirty. The next thing you know, you're not getting home to ten o'clock. I, I honestly, I, I just couldn't handle those meetings, so I would go to the one 
from 1.30 to 2.30 uh, uh, um, on uh, Roswell Road to Haves and the Wants. But <clears throat> joining those meetings, you get to be around the real players. Um, of course, there's going to be a lot of beginners there too, but these are people who are looking for deals, people looking to buy and people looking to sell. So the Real Estate Investor Association meetings uh, can be uh, an incredible place to find deals. By the way, um, one of the next ways I'm going to tell you how to find deals is what I'm one of the ways I'm able, I'm able to pick up a deal every week off of uh, um, off of the between Facebook and Instagram. You can pick up a deal every week if you know what you're doing. So you know now that you're you're again let's let's go back. We're putting out bandit signs. We're going to the courthouse auctions. We're Googling, we buy houses in whatever city that you're interested in. Um, and now we're, um, we're um, let's say going to the Georgia Real Estate Investor Association meetings. And a lot of them you can still join on online. Um, a lot of those meetings you can join online, but I like the social media platforms. And in fact, I have a, uh, I have a new list. Of, of deals, one of my real, in fact, the, the person who was just calling me a minute ago, I had to turn off the phone. Um, she sent me a lead list out of uh, a, a package from out of Florida that I'm going to share on social media. Now, the beauty about social media is people are looking at your, whether you got something to buy or you're looking to sell something. I mean, whether you have something to sell or you're looking to buy something, people see your information all over the country or actually all over the world. So use those social media platforms for business. Don't get, in there, don't get on there talking about what color your hair is, you know, what type of shoes you wear. That's a, that's a waste of your time. I, I do social media for about one hour in the morning, probably after I, after I wake up, I do about 30 minutes of meditation. Then I do one hour of social media. What I do, I go and I answer questions totally related to real estate. I, I ignore all the other crap and stuff. By the way, hopefully everybody who's watching has voted. I've already done mine. If you haven't voted, make sure you vote. <clears throat> but so I ignore all the political crap. I ignore all that. I, I don't have time. I, I'm not going to let, you know, that type of stuff waste my time and my focus and my energy. So I, I ignore all the, the dumb stuff. Anybody who's got something to do with real estate, making money with real estate, buying or selling. And if I have an answer to that question, I'm answering that question. And, and I'm able to build my cash buyers list. A lot of those people on there, and they may be wholesalers, but again, I don't care because this business is not about um, competition. It's about cooperation. So that's why I'm able to pull out a deal every week uh, on, uh, on uh, between Instagram and, and Facebook. I'm not, I have people who line it up that they're sending me deals because I answer that question. I'll, uh, I'll, 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 deal, I'll review whatever property they're trying to sell. I'll tell them to send it to my email address and boom, that's another way for you to find a deal. And it's another way for you to build your buyers list because they're probably buyers and sellers also. There's nothing wrong with co-wholesaling. Another way, one of the ways I got back into the business after 2008 was co-wholesaling. I didn't have, I, uh, I didn't have a bunch of deals come in my way. And so what I would do is find other people who had deals. And most of those, of course, uh, uh, what I didn't do the, the Facebook, all that stuff back then, but I had, I, made, I started going and started becoming more involved with the real estate community. And that allowed me to uh, uh, make contact with people who were interested in um, working with me, allowing me to help them sell deals. I was, uh, I was, I was building my buyers list before I was finding uh, sellers. And really, I was finding buyers. Uh, um, and then I had con contacts and connections with other wholesalers and started moving some of their deals, started making some money. And once I started making money, then I started using that money to do some marketing campaigns. Uh, we started with, I liked, uh, I still do prefer um, um, uh, mailers, postcards. So we started making money doing co-wholesaling from co-wholesaling we start having money to do a marketing campaign and you know the rest of that is history but you can find some great deals and build your buyers list using instagram and 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 facebook join the real estate 
uh, clubs that are on the, and, and um, what do they call it, so, the groups, join some of the real estate investment groups that are on Instagram and Facebook. Leave all that other crap alone. Really, I mean, I mean, I, I, I found out kind of the hard way one time uh, that, um, that they, you, know, you can be drawn into stuff that just wastes your time. And I made a, I commented back on something, and it was just ignorant. And I, I let, I, I got the heck on. I, I just, I, I deleted that person, uh, those people from, you know, from contacting me. So, so use your, um, use your social media platforms to build your buyers list, cash buyers list. It's the, it, one of the easiest ways to, to uh, build your buy, cash buyers list. Now I'm going because we just had somebody come on and who's almost 30 minutes late, but I'm going to back up and just talk about it just briefly where we started. Today's, t- this evening's um, um, class is on building your cash buyers list. Your cash buyers list is one of the most uh, incredible ways to start, uh, uh, um, and it's the cheapest way to start making money in this business. Because once you start building your cash buyers list, it, it, the rest is easy. I mean, I, I literally, I, because I know my buyers well enough it, uh, to to know that as long as the numbers make sense, I have a buyer for the deal. And that's what it's all about. The numbers have to make sense, whether it's a fix and flipper or a buy and hold, the numbers have to make sense. So we talked about bandit signs to build your buyers list. We talked about um, um, going to the courthouse steps auctions the first Tuesday of every month and approaching those People who are bidding on houses in a tactical way, you never disturb them while they're bidding. Wait till after the bidding is done. You introduce yourself, have something to write with, something to write on, and have a business card. You always want to take your business cards to represent being professional. Don't go down to those courthouses and, and just, you know, um, wander around and writing down people's names. And even if they drop your business card, at least you gave them. Give them a business card, write down their first and last name and their phone number. Give them a call tomorrow to let remind them who you are and that you have properties in that in the same county that they were bidding on whatever court, courthouse you met them at. Um, we said we talked about uh, Google. You can Google We Buy Houses Decatur, We Buy Houses Atlanta, We Buy Houses Stone Mountain, We Buy Houses Columbus, Georgia. Whatever you can Google We Buy Houses in any city in the United States and start building your buyer your cash buyers list from there even if they're wholesalers, it doesn't matter because they are probably going to have buyers that you don't have. And especially if you're a beginner, they, they definitely have buyers that you don't have. Then you can focus on finding deals. One of my favorite uh, students uh, who is um, featured in one of our testimonials, Terrence. Terrence killed it with his buyers list. I mean, this list, it, I, I, my buyers list stays around between 1,500 to 2,000. This kid got his up to 10,000 and was killing. Anybody have any questions? All right. So now we talked about now Googling. Again, you can Google all of the United States and get your build your buyers list. Uh, join the real estate investor associations. You can do that virtually now because most of them are holding these meetings virtually. Not, you know, there used to be a time where we were all going to these meetings and uh, uh, meeting at restaurants in the evenings and things of that nature. Like I said before, I, I wasn't a fan of those types of meetings. So they usually start at seven and then only end to eight or nine, 10 o'clock at night. That ain't what I want to be doing that time of night. It's really not. I do this business because I can set my own hours and I enjoy my lifestyle. And I, I enjoy doing what we do from 6.30 to seven, but none of us have to travel. We can do this from the computer. You can learn, you can ask questions. We can make things happen. We can get busy. So join the Real Estate Investor Association in Google, Georgia Real Estate Investor Association, Atlanta Real Estate Investor Association, and you know, join some of those. Join those that never hurt. And we talked about social media. Your social media platforms are some of your uh, uh, are a really good way to um, build your cash buyers uh, uh, list. Um, your Facebook ads, running, through, um, just go on social media and just go through it and, and 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 engage, engage with the you know you, know, you being a if, I'll just uh, apparently some you know you you all are listening to me. Some of you are beginners, some have a little more experience than others, but engage as much as or ask questions. I mean, you may not have any answers 
for the questions that are out there, but ask questions. I go in there just to a a answer questions. I, 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 like I said, I get up, uh, I'm, I'm up about 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I spend I, uh, about 30 minutes of, some, of you know prayer, meditation. Then I do about an hour on social media. Then I do, a, then I'm heading into my basement. I'm trying to get down to my basement by 7.30 in the morning to work out from 7.30 to 8.30. That's again, what I don't have to deal with any rush out of traffic. This is the this is the lifestyle I set up for myself back in starting from 1997, looking ahead to go this way. Well, I didn't have to, you know, punch somebody's time clock. I don't have to, you know, get out and, and, and fumble around and rush out of traffic. I set my schedule the way I want to. I try not to even set closings up uh, uh, until uh, a certain time of day because I don't want to deal with rush hour traffic. By the way, we have uh, you know several closings you know this week. Um, so we closing deals. We you know we we we're finding deals uh, and having a blast doing it. And I want you know I'm hoping that you all are uh, you know whatever it takes to find deals. I mean I, I mean we we go we spent the first five six seven weeks talking about. Uh, how to find motivated sellers. Have you all been doing that? You know, I've, I've shared the, the deal-driven app with you all. And so to, that's why I said today we're moving on to helping you get those deals sold. Hopefully you're finding some deals so we can help you get them sold. And that's why we're talking about finding cash buyers. So does anyone have any questions? Building your buyers list, you got to have some questions. You got any answers? Um, I uh, I got quite a few people on my buyers list from PropStream. Um, that's all. That's about it. Tell me why you went to PropStream to to to, uh, to build your buyers list. Well, it's not that I went to PropStream to build my buyers list. It's just they give you they they give you uh buyers, you know, in the right. area that you're searching. You could type in any address and uh. They'll give you up to, I've seen up to 200 buyers, 300 buyers, 150, stuff like that. You know, in the area, in the cash buyers that bought with cash in the area within the last year or two, you know. Gotcha. Now, by the way, the deal driven app, I forgot to say, the deal driven app is another way to build your cash buyers list through the deal driven app. For those of you who studied it and, and watched the tutorials, you do know that on the deal driven app, one of the, uh, circles if you i think it's the green circle that shows a green circle on a house uh, on address street you know that was a cash uh a house bought with cash so now at that point you get the address to that property and you do some research to find out who bought the house and then you have to reach out to them to find out if they want to be added to your buyers list <clears throat> but so uh does has anyone else out there started building their cash buyers list you got to start working on building your cash buyers list. It's very important because, it, and that's why I'm sharing this with you tonight, because once you start building your buyers list, you, you're going to have more confidence on uh, getting properties under contract and getting them sold. So there's nothing wrong with building your cash buyers list. And again, it's the, it, it'll cost you more to find deals than it'll cost you to build your buyers list. So take that for you know, take advantage of that. You know, uh, of course, bandit signs cost money, but uh, Googling, um, we buy houses, whatever city you're interested in, costs you nothing except for the electricity and your cable bill. Um, um, again, um, going to the the uh, social media platforms costs you nothing to build, you know, going there and find out who's, uh, who's, who are cash buyers looking for deals. <clears throat> another way I, I mentioned, another thing that I did mention when I first got started in the business, I ran dummy ads in the uh, Atlanta Journal Constitution. Again, this is way before all the social media stuff. This was 1998, 99, 2000. I ran, I used to run dummy ads in the Atlanta Journal Constitution when I first got started to say I had, a, I would find, I would pick a good, zip, pick a, a hot zip code, 30318, 30310, 30311. 30314. As you see, I'm a zip code fanatic because I know what's happening in Metro Atlanta because of the zip codes. And you're going to need to understand that also. So as I uh, run the, uh, as I ran my ads, I would, well, 
I would pick a zip code and say I have a three bedroom, one bath, and I would give a real good, uh, you know, not a crazy number, but it, for example, right now, it's, it, most the, the average fix and flip you're going to pick up for, although we just, I picked up one for 65 grand a couple weeks ago and sold it for 85 grand. Uh, but most of the time you're going to get them in the, if you can get anything below 90,000, you can most likely sell it depending on the zip code now. So don't, 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 don't hold my feet to the fire on that. Depending on the zip code, if you can get something under 90,000 and the 30318 zip code, you could probably sell it to somebody for uh, anywhere from 95 to hundred grand uh, as a, a, depending on the square footage and you know, what kind of condition, but most likely you can sell it somewhere between uh, 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 95 to a hundred thousand dollars. So, but let's just say, 30318 zip code. You, you get some uh, and you run an ad. In fact, you can run, you don't have to, it, again, this don't have to be in the AJC. You can put this ad on uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, you can, you, whatever you, uh, Craigslist, wherever you can advertise this, pick a zip code that's hot, 30318. This is a three bedroom, one bath house, 1500 square feet. The reason I'm saying 1500 square feet because the average investor wants a minimum of 1,500 square feet. Although I'm selling stuff uh, smaller because what investors are doing now, fixing flippers, they're adding square footage to these houses. So they may pick up something at 1,000 square feet and they got to figure, you know, if, if they add another 500 square feet to it, what it's going to cost to do that? And what is the ARV after that, the after rehab value? What's it worth after I add another 1,500, uh, after I add another 500 square feet to it? So. But you're going to say uh, three bedroom, one bath in the 30318 zip code of Atlanta, um, 1,500 square feet, and give them a price of, say, $79,000 and watch your phone ring off it. Because every, everybody's going to be calling you, and you know what you're going to say? Because you, you really don't have that property, when they call you, you will say, I just, that property just went under contract. And you're not going to give a full address, but what you're going to do is give a hot zip code. Uh, and 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 a, and, a, and a reasonable uh, square footage size of the house to get investors saying, "I want that house, seventy nine thousand dollars, three one, fifteen hundred square feet," and they're thinking, being a three one and fifteen hundred square feet, I should easily be able to. This should be some room where I can add another bathroom because they want to make it a minimum of a three two. Fifteen hundred square foot house is easily figure out how to add a second bathroom somewhere on from the inside. Now, if it's only a thousand square feet, then they're figuring out what I can do from the outside and what is it going to be worth. I've sold houses to people that are uh, the fix and flippers that were a thousand square feet, and uh, they they got to add five hundred uh, foot feet a square feet to it, which is usually going to be like the master bedroom area and, and, and a bathroom. That's what they're going to mostly add to it. And so now they got a three two or potentially a four two at that time or four, uh, uh, yeah, four two at that time because it already had three bedrooms and one bath. So it just depends. But I've sold thousand square foot homes and I've maybe sold them for say a hundred grand. They figure they got, it's gonna cost them another $60,000 to, to, to add square footage and finish off the work. They're in it at a hundred and say 60, close to 170 grand with closing costs and things of that nature. But they're gonna put it back on the market for sale for like 250, you know, 269. And now they got a profit margin they can work with. So run those ads, run those ads to tell people what you got for sale. You know, a hot zip code, uh, a, a reasonable square footage, you know, 1500, 1300 square feet and watch your phone ring and people are gonna call you wanting to know what uh, is that, when can I see that house? What's the full address? And when they call you, you're gonna say, that house just went into contract, but I'm working on another one right in that area, almost exactly like it, but I can't uh, share that information with you until uh, the contract is signed, well, with, until I'm, uh, I'm negotiating on that house and I can't uh, divulge that address until the contract is signed. But if you allow me to add you to my buyer's list, you could be one of the first, because I'm going to be selling it around the same price range. You'll be one of the first that I call when I get it locked down. And 99.9% of the time, they don't want to be on your buyer's list because they want you to call them first once you get it locked down. And next thing you want to do, when you run an ad like that in a, in a zip code that's hot like that, and you get people calling you, 
for area houses like that. Next thing you want to do is start a marketing campaign right in that area because you already know you got buyers for it. That's what I'm saying. To build your buyers list can build your confidence. You know, so you always you want to start uh, running. You want to start a marketing campaign to sellers in that in that same area, that same zip code. Hopefully, you can get something in the price range where we kind of where you sold that first one, where you didn't sell it, where, where you thought you you know where you uh, proposed to have a, a property that got away because it was such a good deal and so on. But believe me, if you get something in the contract, like I said, it, 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 anywhere and and some of the hot zip codes under 90 grand, they're going to sell fast. I mean, they're gonna, I could have sold the one that I got for 65 grand. I could have sold it for probably another five or 10,000 on top of that. But like I said, we got it for 65 and I sold that thing for 85 grand with the quickness. And it was incredible. Um, so it's, it's about building your buyers list uh, having a strategy to put those uh, buyers in a um, in, in your in a set aside a, 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 a section of your email, uh, maybe even have a different email address for your buyers because we we do we you know my emails for to make come to my uh, emails come to my uh, uh, personal direct email, but when they come as buyers, we set them aside in a buyer's list. They literally go to a buyer's list because when I have a property, I can hit a button. We, we, my wife downloads that property into our buyers list and all our buyers get it at one time. So it's not like I got, I don't have to call everybody. I send them to everybody. Even if they say, well, I only buy in Gwinnett County. That's fine. No problem. So when you see a property come from me, that's not in Gwinnett County, then you just ignore it. But you'd be surprised how many of those guys who say they only buy in Gwinnett County, if the right number uh, come, if the right deal come through and the numbers make sense, they're buying Clayton County. So I don't pay any attention to that. I send it to everybody on my buyers list and because one man's ceiling is another man's floor. Just because it won't sell to one buyer, don't mean it won't sell to another. And the more strong buyers you have, real cash buyers, the more likely you, you'll sell something when you get it under contract. Anybody have any questions? No questions. So um, I like to see, I mean, this time next week, I mean, I, I, I really, I just, I just painted an incredible picture for you all to build your buyers list. All of you should have some, some buyers on your list uh, uh, between now and next week. I mean, because you can just get off the, you, you can get off, off, once we get off this meeting, you can sit there at your computer and just Google, we buy houses here, there, and everywhere, and start making those lists. You don't have to leave your, you don't have to, this is something else again, you don't have to leave your desk for to build your buyers list. <clears throat> you can start running some ads to build your buyers list. Everybody should have some cash buyers this time next week. This is the, one of the easiest things to do is to build your buyers list. It really is. It really is. So, any questions? I'm going to ask some questions to you all and so everybody. Um, let's see. Chris, how many do you have on your buyers list? <laughs> Um, I don't have a specific buyers list right now, but I do have um in prop stream they let you um do like the uh what you call them uh, uh lost my train of thought the Excel sheets. So I got a few homes um maybe like two hundred that's in Clayton County that's uh on my Excel sheets. I've never called them or skip traced the numbers or nothing, but um because like I said I've never. All, all the contracts I ever had was on market property. So I've never gotten like an off market contract. So um, I've never, and I told you none of those seven contracts went through. So I've never actually had to call a buyer. You know what I mean? So Okay, let's start building your buyers list as of today or in the morning. Start building your buyers list. That's gonna, I mean, it's like pumping iron. You're gonna get stronger from it, you know? Start building everybody. Start building your buyers list. You, you, I, again, I, I'm mapped out. I'm I, I mean, literally, I, it's that easy. And, and I, I would not recommend, although you know, do you, do you, some of those um, companies that supply buyers list is not as accurate as the stuff that I told you today. Because most of these people, you're going to be like, if you're doing bandit signs, those people are going to call you. You're not going to be going through, you know, some you know, some uh, software that shares that information with you, other than the, the deal-driven app. Um, if you're Googling, you're going to Google 
and see, these are going to be live companies that have websites and, and contact information when you Google them for their uh, information as cash buyers. They're going to tell you we buy houses. Some of them have videos that you know talk about what they do and what where they do it. Uh, and, and some of them will have forms for you to fill out. They'll be like, you know, uh, okay, fill out this form. You know, it'll be on their on their um, website. Fill out a form with the address and the phone number, um, uh, address in the beds and baths of the property. I used to skip right through that. What I would do, I'd fill out, I fill out. I would fill it out. I really would, and get calls. Because what I would do, I would do that same thing like I probably do in the uh, and, and when I run my ad in the AJC or run an ad on uh, Facebook saying I got a house in the three three zero three one eight zip code at an incredible price. I you know making price like I said someplace under eighty uh, under eighty or under ninety thousand and they they're gonna probably call you back. They're gonna ask you. They, you're gonna have to fill out a little form. They may ask for an address. You don't have to give a full address. You can just say Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, three bedroom, two bath, um, you, and, and your contact information, and they'll call you. I'm trying to help you understand how I have these people calling you instead of you having to, and, and it, but you do have to set up some type of, uh, 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 <clears throat> you need to set up some type of way that will allow you to collect that information. Um, my, my wife sets up, set up all that kind of stuff for us. I don't even, I, she would, in fact, right now, our our, um, if any of you have see, received an email from me, you see on my email, if you scroll down, <clears throat> if you scroll down, you'll see that at the, as you go down on my email, it, 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 I have a, a, a hyperlink that says join our email list. And that's another way to, because when I, when I send out deals and people re reply to them, when I send emails, people see my email list and they want to, uh, and be added to my buyers list and, um, immediately. Um, they do, you know, they can. They can sign up. Make it easy for those people to sign up on your buyers list. Build your buyers list. I expect everybody. I expect everybody to have a minimum of fifty uh, cash buyers on their buyers list by this time next week. I mean, it, it, you got no excuse. At least fifty. I, I, I mean, if you don't, you don't have to do banded signs. You can literally, if we got out, once we get off this call in about nine minutes, eight minutes, whatever it is, <clears throat> you could stay at your computer and Google "we buy houses," wherever, and and you could end the night with a minimum of fifty. I mean, and if you took it, if you go in and and, and get real busy, you probably end the night with a hundred. Uh, so. You know, uh, and I and that's just with just googling. That that doesn't have nothing to do with going to Facebook and joining some of those Facebook uh, groups and pages and so on and collecting their contact information. Um, our, our our virtual assistants will be adding those to our because I don't have time. I said I can only do uh, virtual. I can only do uh, 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 what do you call social media for about one hour in the morning. If I waste, if I did that. I'd, I'd waste my whole day if that's all I did with social media, you know, looking at stuff and replying to stuff that don't matter, don't, it's just not necessary. So I have a virtual assistant. Her job is to go through my Facebook pages and places that I've joined and places that uh, only only for real estate, uh, places that I've joined, places that want me to join and sending me, you know, uh, 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 you know sending me stuff to join. And what she, her job will be to extract the buyers and the sellers. Now the buyers will just go straight into our buyers list, but the seller, people who got stuff for sale, should be sending that directly to me. And I'll, I'll get to look at those deals uh, daily and see which ones I want to make a move on. I'm telling you, you can pick up at least one deal a week. I'm telling you, you can pick up at least one deal a week from social media if you take the time to look for it. Are any of you on so, any social media platforms? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I I'm actually following um one or two that you follow. I seen you uh write down your email a couple times right under my comment. Okay. But I don't know what I'm doing, so you know, yeah. I'm just. We all got to start somewhere. Believe me, I, when it comes to social media, I don't know what I'm doing either. So join the club. But the only thing I do know is real estate. So that's why if you see me on social media, I'm replying and responding to something to do with real estate. I'm either uh, um, I'm either helping someone figure out how to buy something or sell something. I, uh, and I, I share a bunch of information. I invite people to our classes. Um, um, I'm, I'm, we're picking up students. 
Uh, so it's all about that for me. I'm not in there to now. I I, I I do have to admit I'm hooked on the nice cars that I see on the Instagram. I'm I, I like cars, so I, I start thumbing through Instagram and that'll take me away. I'm looking at the Ferraris and the Lambos and so on. But other than that, you know, I stay focused on uh, uh, just on what it takes to to make a deal happen. Let's get paid. That's what this is all about. Uh, I want to help you all get paid. You know, and and and, and so. Uh, Mr. Shabazz, how you doing today? Mr. Shabazz, are you muted? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, man, I got. I, I, we go through this every week. I got to get you. A, we got to get you a mic. Um, how did it go? Um, did you do any driving for dollars last week? Uh, no, I didn't. I was. Um... I had some other things, man. I was just trying to work on getting some finances uh, together. Do you think you have time to uh, to uh, to build your cash, start building your cash buyers list? What, what do you think about what we learned, what I shared with you all tonight about building your cash buyers list? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, that, that's great. That's, that's great. Um, yeah. You going to take advantage of some of it? Yeah, I will. Great, great. Uh, there were some other people online, but I don't see their, I guess we got, of course, I guess they're dropping off. Maybe it's too late. Um, any, <clears throat> anybody who want to add something to regarding buying their, uh, building their cash buyers list, Chris, I yes, got a sir. question for you. Uh -huh. How do you feel about what I shared with you tonight? Were you oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 uh, I never thought about, um, actually, um, posting a, a house or something, you know, just to get callers to come in, you know, per posting that perfect, that three three bedroom, two bath, you know, perfect zip code just to get some calls flooding in. So that was a good piece of information right there. I appreciate Great. that. Great. That's what I do, man. That's what I, that came to me when in, in like 1998, 99, right? Right after I did my first wholesale deal and I, I just, I just knew there had to be uh, more people like the, 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 if you all have ever watched my, uh, my videos, you know that I that the first wholesale deal I did was in East Point with a guy named Joe. Uh, uh, Joe actually lives in Fayetteville, and, and, and he's going off into commercial real estate. Uh, a developer, builder, cat lives in a ten thousand square foot home, chilling. Nice guy. He helped me do my first wholesale deal. By the way, the first deal that I did, the, I, I did a thirty thousand dollar deal. The first big deal that I did, I actually I didn't do that with him but his wife was a broker uh, i mean a, a mortgage broker and she arranged the loan for the guy who bought that deal from me i got a quad in the contract in grant park I acquired a four unit apartment building got in the contract for sixty nine thousand nine hundred dollars in like early 1999 and i sold it 30 days later for uh, uh, I got it. For, no, I got it for sixty nine nine. I got it, I got it under contract for sixty nine thousand nine hundred dollars. I sold it thirty days later for ninety nine thousand nine. I made thirty grand, and of course I was making deals, making money before up into that deal. So my first deal was with Joe, and then the deal that helped me quit my job was with his wife because she was the broker uh, for the choose the mortgage broker for the guy who bought it from me. And I mean, I, I, I never forget, man. I, I, I remember calling my wife. I had a thirty thousand. We got a thirty thousand dollar check. I'm out. I, I found a four apartment complex. Uh, uh, that's it's it's two two buildings, the same type. It's three buildings total, and one of them just, you know, it could have been either fire damage or it could have been you know, what happened to it, but one building sitting all by itself. I can't get in. I don't found the lady. I don't found out everything you know that i needed to know but uh i just can't get in contact with her she's an 82 year old lady that live in atlanta and uh but i've never sent the postcard to her home and i found that i found that property um like a month ago like three weeks to a month ago what what, what zip code is it in um i don't remember the zip code but it's um um it's right there off of uh Start, uh, become, start, start becoming a zip code fanatic. I'm yeah. telling you, in, in Metro Atlanta, you're going to be, it's going to be easier to understand what's going on when you understand the zip codes. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I, the hot zip codes are 30318, 
303-10-303-11-303-14. There used to be 303-16-303-17, which is East Atlanta. And East you Atlanta. You reminded me, I got a, I, I have a cash buyer uh, uh, that I, I got from Craigslist. Okay. Um, I, and that's his. That was his hot zones. Uh, three hundred three one zero and uh, basically Decatur and Atlanta. Yep, yep. That's that's and, and you can run those ads on Craigslist also, by the way. And it was on a uh, Garden Walk, like Riverdale, uh, like South Atlanta. Okay, so in Clayton uh, County, North Riverdale, yeah, uh, Garden Walk out there on Garden Walk. That's what the, that's what the duplex. I mean, that's what the, these small apartments are. Yeah, it's four apartments. Uh, it's one whole. The whole building vacant. is just. Just shut down, but it's two operating buildings right beside it. You know what I'm saying? I got leads like that everywhere, man. I, I just I got we, to find we, out how to capitalize. Okay, tomorrow I actually have an appointment at eleven, um, and I'll be done. Shouldn't be no more than an hour or two. But what I want to do, I want to you and I, I, you and I need to meet in the field, and and if nothing. I'm, I would like to see those apartments, and then I wouldn't mind us going over to that lady's house and knocking on the door if you got her address. You, yes, sir. I got everything. You yeah. remember? Uh, you remember? You remember the show in the heat of the night? Yeah. You remember Virgil? Yeah. That's his people. Oh, okay. I, I, I even found that out. That's how hard I've been digging for three weeks trying to get in contact with the lady. Yeah, her last name is Pooser. That's his. That's his last name. He uh he moved his family to Georgia uh once he started that show. He okay. Was, he's from uh, North Carolina and New York. Right. And they were filming that show here in Georgia. Right. Uh, yeah. We're and so. Well, but see, that? Well, I want you to be prepared when we knock on the door with a business card, um, uh, even a flyer. Right there you go. You got your business card. I, right here. I like it. Let, let me see the back of it. <laughs> oh, that's right. You, I, I, okay. I want you to see the back of my business card. That's the back. I know you can't really read it. But let me turn it around and see the front. Yeah, yeah, okay. Always take advantage of both sides of your business card. Always, that's free advertising right there. That's free advertising. So, but in the meantime, let's do what you got. There's nothing wrong with that. You got to start somewhere. Uh, got the magnets too. Oh, you ready? I like that. I like that. Those are good. How many did you get? Oh, I got two for each side, and then I'm going to order. Uh, I wanted to make sure they was the right one, so... Uh, I got a little package deal, you know, 500 cards. I got like 250, um, 250, uh, postcards and I even got a hat. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I even got the, we buy a uh, home's cash hat. And, uh, now, in fact, I'm trying to give me some mask. I, I want to, you know, everybody's wearing masks. Now I want to give me a mask that says cash for your crib. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now on your band, on your signs, do you put a Google, uh, ad? Do you put a I Google? Do. Okay, you I got, a, I got my personal. Google voice number. Okay, great, great. All right, cool. We got to meet in the field. Uh, if we don't do it tomorrow, then how about Friday? Because I, I really want to, I really want to meet you face to face, and uh, we really want to get the show on the road for you because you've been doing this too long to not to have what I think you should have yeah. by, by now. And yeah, I want to start with the. You know, honestly, I like to start with it with the list that you have. Let's start with the list that you have and see what we can make happen from. All right. Uh, yeah, I got about I got like a hundred of them. Okay. Okay. Something. That, let's find out what's happening with that list and work our way into some fresh stuff. Also. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's seven thirty-two. I'm glad y'all you know came and hung out with me tonight. Uh, I know you could have been anywhere else. I I really appreciate your time and, and your questions and your and your uh, uh, efforts. Um, keep do I won't say keep doing what you're doing. Let's do more of what you're doing. So you know, let's let's be let's cash some checks before the money is out. Let's let's get, definitely before the year is out. You know, yeah. uh, deals are being done. Deals are being made. Go go to some of the social media platforms as well. As Chris, you said you you see what's happening on those social media platforms. You yeah, see people passing around deals and, and asking questions, and uh, it's a good way for you to build your buyers list. All right, tonight's lesson was on building your cash buyers list. Hopefully, everybody learned something. I look forward to seeing y'all again this time uh, uh, next week, same time, same place. And we're gonna go over some more uh, on building your cash buyers list. Hopefully, we're talking about some of the ways you guys have uh, 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 given it a try, whether you 
did bandit signs, did some Googling. Uh, let's discuss it all uh, next week. All right. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Talk to y'all later. Have a great night. All right. You too.